Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna share with you why you're not seeing progress in data science and you're not feeling like you're succeeding in it. A lot of people reach out to me and they are struggling. They're feeling like they're not making progress and they're feeling like they're getting stuck and maybe they're gonna be replaced and they might lose their job and if data science is even relevant anymore. And all these questions, they come up to a few things and I'm going to share with you how you can overcome them. There is something that I call the consumer effect. The consumer effect is where you consume more than you produce. And that's when you're trapped in tutorial hell, which means that you keep watching tutorials, feeling like you're productive, but you're just watching things, you're not applying them. You overthink too much, you think, I need to get this perfect or I need to watch all these videos or read all these things before taking any action and overthinking creates analytics paralysis. You feel tired, you were just overthinking everything but you didn't take any action and that's problematic. You also go through projects that everyone has done, you know the Titanic project, the Iris project, you're not adding your own input. You're just doing the same thing as thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have done, and that will never help you stand out. The thing is you deep down know that those projects, they're not that interesting anymore. You can start with, if it's your first ever project, yes, but then try to go a little bit deeper into topics, try to challenge yourself. I share plenty of videos in, in my channel where you can see some different projects that you can tackle, go a little bit more in depth and try to just escape that consumer mindset and be more a producer. And number four in the consumer effect is following the hype. A lot of people, they fall for it. We have this fear of missing out or the FOMO, where we always think that if we miss on this new tool, this new technology, if we don't do the newest things, then we might lose something. We always hear these success stories of people that have done something that is new, made a few hundred thousand dollars or millions of dollars and you're like, why not me? The problem with this is most of the time, those people that have those kind of success, they have lots of experience in the background and they've accumulated tens of years of experiences and that's how they manage to quickly jump on a trend. But if you're just starting out or if you just have a few years of experience, jumping on each trend is negative. And what will happen is that you will end up not making progress in anything. You'll be average in everything and therefore your value will be minimal. A lot of things that we discussed in the consumer effect, they lead into an illusion of progress. And that's where it gets tricky. It's like that relationship that is not bad, but not great. It's just good enough and you just stay there. And it's a little bit the same thing that happens on the consumer effect because you watch a lot of tutorials, you do a lot of these basic hands-on projects and you get this illusion that you're making progress. But deep down, you know that you're not really mastering anything. And that's where it gets tricky because someone that is into the consumer effect sometimes doesn't even feel that they are in there. They just feel like they always consume, they always have playlists in deep learning, in machine learning, AI agents, in retrieval augmented generation, all this kind of stuff in statistics, in uh, visualization, in Docker containers, in machine learning engineering. There's so much that you could explore and you have all these resources, all these um, links that you collect on LinkedIn or other platforms that you say you're gonna watch but you just add more load into yourself and into your brain. And your brain doesn't work that way. The way your brain works is that you need to take a few topics and dig into them and give them time. Initially, they will look difficult and that's just fine. Sit and study properly. And then when you feel like you got the skill or you need something else, then go look for it. So here are ways or signals to spot the illusion of progress. One is you feel like you're making slow progress even though you're watching tons of videos and uh, doing tutorials. Two is you always feel busy. You're making slow progress but you still feel busy all the time. You always have courses, you always have videos, there's always something on your task but you're still not making progress. Three, you're still feeling behind. Like you're not making enough progress to catch up with your colleagues, with people that you see online. You just feel like you've put in a lot of hours but you don't make that enough progress. You always feel like you're left behind. Number four is lack of mastery. You feel like you know a lot of things, but you don't know one thing well enough. 
And that's the problem when you chase a lot of consumption is that you never sit and try and master one thing because it takes time, you get bored and you decide to move on to the next thing. And number five is too many shallow skills. Too many shallow skills means you know about Python, SQL, R and so many different things, but you're not good at any one of them. This one is well combined with the lack of mastery because knowing too many shallow skills and having too many shallow skills leads to not master any of them. So these are all the signals that can give you a hint that you have this illusion of progress, but you're not making real progress. So how can you break free from the consumption effect? By the way, if you're enjoying the video, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It does help me massively. Thank you for doing it. If you have any content ideas or something you want me to cover next, just leave them in the comments. I'll make sure to make a video on them in the upcoming weeks or months. So the way you can break free from the consumption effect is to go into the builder effect. The builder effect, as the name suggests, is someone that builds, someone that does hands-on, someone that works on projects. And I recently wrote this uh, content on LinkedIn where I mentioned about what's the best portfolio to have as a data scientist. And I gave the general opinion that a lot of people will tell you that you should do a lot of practice, meaning a lot of projects and others will tell you to do very few projects but dig deeper into them. Try to really understand what's the value you provided and try to optimize for businesses as well. And my point of view is a good mix of both. If you're a complete beginner, do a lot of small projects, it's good to get practice. If you have a few years of experience, yes, do less projects, but really dig deeper into them. Try to use solutions that companies use in the real world. Try to optimize for the metrics that companies optimize for as well. Try to really bring all that value into something that you could explain it to a business and they will feel like you can add value to them. So it makes you more valuable than doing 25 different random projects. But one thing that no one mentions is doing a project of your interest. In my channel, you're going to find a football data analytics project that I did uh, analyzing La Liga uh, football championship. That was something that interests me. I like football, I like Real Madrid. I want to see if they can win the championship uh, in the previous year, which they didn't. Uh, but it was interesting for me to go scrape that data, analyze it, try to make some insights from it that are interesting to answer my own questions via analytics. And that's something that was a little bit challenging initially, but that was very interesting. I didn't mind coming late on my computer and work on it because it was interesting, you know? And if you just do a random project that you're not even interested in, you're just doing it as some sort of daunting task. They just add it to your task list. But when you do something that interests you, you don't mind digging more and mastering more and spending more time and asking more questions and refining and that's what lead to you sharpening your skills. And the cool thing about it is that the more you dig into a topic and the more you will need to learn things, you'll need to learn new tools, new techniques, new frameworks, a uh, new way of thinking, new way of cleaning, a uh, new way of uh, optimizing your code. And that's where you can go and watch specific tutorials on specific things or read books on specific things because then you're looking for an information that you can just go and implement and that sticks way better than taking a book like this with 500 pages that you just read through like a novel and then you're gonna forget everything and talking about books books usually are not much recommended in this field because we prefer watching tutorials and doing code which is fair enough i'm also like this but uh, this year i've also decided to start read more and it opened my perspective to different things uh, there are a lot of books that are very interesting, but I would recommend Designing Machine Learning Systems from Chip Hewen that I have just here. Uh, if you're just reading your first book, it gives you more of a mindset of how data scientists and machine learning engineers work, going from just writing simple code in notebooks into producing something more end-to-end -end that is deployed and usable by the end user. And that has been the purpose of my channel for the past few months, where I do end-to-end -end projects. You're gonna find them in my channel. I'll link in the description below as well so you can go and watch them it's like two two and a half hours videos and i really try to move from just doing things in a very basic way to do things that really add value they can share with you that you can play around with that can really benefit the business if they use it 
You should try and move from doing basic projects with not much value into something that can benefit people in the real world so that when you have conversations with an employer, recruiter, people on the internet, you can show them that you know what you're doing. And that's where the real value is, going from the consumption into the builder. And as I said, I have two end-to-end -end videos so far that I uploaded that will have more. You're gonna find them in my channel. I'll link one just here for you that you can go and watch. You're gonna see how we can go from doing things locally into deploying and creating something that adds value. You can go and watch it here.